Hello everyone and welcome back to the Developer Ladder tutorial series. In this episode, this is the last tutorial of the series. It's not the last episode itself. We still have one more episode where we'll talk about where to go next after you have completed this tutorial series. But for this episode, we are going to take all of the different skills and concepts that we have learned throughout this ICP journey and combine them to create an auction application. So up until this point, we have focused on specific use cases or features of ICP. And so we are going to create an auction, which is a general purpose application to showcase a real world application use. So we are going to create this application that allows you to open and view auctions, bid on auctions with a defined deadline, and then log into the app with internet identity. For a brief introduction on how auctions work in general, so to create an auction, an item needs to first be put up for sale. Traditionally, auctions can be thought of for things such as collectibles, art pieces, or other items that may not have a specific set retail value. Then once that item is up for sale, potential buyers can place bids on how much they'd like to pay for that item. Usually auctions can last minutes or hours. Sometimes online auctions will last days or weeks. And this provides buyers the opportunity to outbid one another. The buyer with the highest bid whenever the auction ends receives the item. Auctions are popular for all sorts of different things, but they can also be used for nonprofit events such as charity events to raise money for organizations. So this is a great general purpose application that really is able to showcase the benefits of launching a decentralized app on ICP since there is an immutable record of the application and the users that bid on the item and then whoever purchases the item and that allows for a verifiable record of sales for high value items that are sold at auctions or digital assets such as NFTs. So before we get started, verify that you have set up your developer environment according to the instructions in the previous module 0.3, Developer Environment Setup. For this example, we are going to use a Git repo that was created originally for a Matoko workshop at the KTH Summer School. In this repo, there are some additional supplemental resources for learning Matoko that were included as part of that learning summer school workshop. We won't be reviewing those educational resources in this video, but they are highly valuable. And so it is definitely recommended that you check them out for additional context. So to get this GitHub repo, let's go ahead and open up a new terminal window. Let's navigate into our working directory. And then we will use git clone. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste the URL directly from the documentation. And it's going to clone into a folder called auction. So then we're just going to CD into auction. And then let's go ahead and open this project in VS Code so we can take a look at the project's files. So if we take a look at the initial file structure of this project, we can see that it resembles most of the other projects that we have used throughout this series. So we have a dfx.json file, we have a readme file with some basic context for the project. Then in this source file, we have a front end folder for the front end canister. And then we have three backend folders since there are three variations of this project. One is for Matoko, one is for Rust, and one is for TypeScript. And we can see that the, those are reflected in different variations of dfx.json files as well. 
The default one is going to use the Motoko backend since this project was originally developed for the Motoko workshop. So that is the default and that is also what we'll be using in this tutorial since this series has focused on Motoko development. And so in this we can see that we have a backend canister that uses the source code auction server.mo. We have a front end canister. And then we also are going to pull the internet identity canister and use that in our application as well to enable us to log in with internet identity. And then here we can see we have a PDF called ICP programming tutorial. We won't be able to open it in VS Code, but this is one of those supplemental educational resources that I mentioned that is valuable to review if you'd like. So now if we go into the Motoko backend folder and we go into this auction server.mo file, we can start to scroll through and look at some of the placeholder code that is in this file. And since this tutorial was originally developed for a workshop, you will notice that there are several comments throughout the code in the state that say to do and implementation. So during this workshop, it was intended for students to write this code themselves based on the content that they learned in the programming tutorial. For this tutorial, however, we are going to go ahead and just copy and go through the completed version. So if we are in the documentation, we can copy this and then I'm just going to replace that here in our auction server.mo file. And then if we go through it, we can see that we start off like other Motoko files by importing the necessary libraries. Then we are going to define the actor for the auction platform. And in this, we are going to define a custom type called item that has a title, description, and image. Then we are going to define a type called bid that has a price, a time, and an originator. That originator is going to be the principal of the authenticated user that made the bid. We're also going to define a custom type for the auction ID, a custom type for the auction overview, which is going to be the auction ID and the item that is part of the auction define a type for the auction details, which include the item, the bid history, and the remaining time. And then define a non-shared type for storing the auction's ID, the item being sold at the auction, and then a variable for the bid history and a variable for the remaining time. Next, we have two stable variables to store information about the auction. The first is going to be a list of all of the auctions that have been initiated on this application. And the second is going to be a counter for generating new auction IDs. Next, we're going to define a function that's used to determine the amount of time remaining in the open auction using function tick async for auction in list auctions if auction dot remaining time is greater than zero we want to minus one second from that remaining time then we are going to define a timer to call this tick function every one second so it will minus one from the remaining time every one second and here we can see that we are getting a underline here and that is because we are missing this system identifier here when we are defining this timer. Then we're going to define a function to generate a new auction. So function new auction ID let ID equal ID counter and then we'll increase that counter by a value of one and return that ID. Then we are going to define another function to register a new auction that is open for the defined duration. So new auction item duration. The ID is going to be that new auction ID function. The bid history is going to be list 
of bids. And then new auction is going to have an item, the bid history, the remaining time, which is going to equal the duration. Then this stable variable auctions, this is a list and it is going to be appended to include this new auction. We're also going to define a function to retrieve all auctions. So this is going to be called get overview list and it is going to get an overview of each auction, including the auction ID and the auctions item. And then it is going to create a list of all of the overviews for each auction that is in list auctions. Then we have an internal helper function to help retrieve auctions by ID. So if we want to find an auction, we can search it by the auction ID. And this includes a switch statement to check and debug if we search for an ID that does not exist. Then we have another public function that is used to retrieve detailed info about an auction using its ID. So it will be passed the auction ID and it will call that find auction helper function. And then it will also return the bid history and the remaining time for the auction. Then we have another internal helper that is used to retrieve the minimum price for the auction. Um, the minimum price is going to be the last bid price plus one, since you can't bid less than the previous person before you. And then lastly, we have the function that allows you to make the bid. So it is going to check that the user or message that caller is authenticated so that they have been logged in with internet identity. It's going to check that the price is valid, meaning it is higher than the last bid if there is a last bid. And it's also going to check that the auction is still open. So the remaining time is not zero. And then if all of that is valid, the bid is appended to the bid history. If something happens that makes it not valid, it is going to trap with an error. So now let's go ahead and save this code and then go back to our terminal window. And we need to start our local replica. So we'll do dfx start clean background. And we can see that I already have dfx running. And then I am going to deploy the canisters in this project with npm run setup. That's because there are, that's because there is a script already set up in this project to run some of the setup functionalities. And this is defined over here in the package.json file. So we can see scripts set up and it's going to run npm ci and dfx canister create backend and dfx generate backend and dfx deploy. So by running npm run setup, it's going to run all of those commands as a script. And then we can also see that that is outputted to the terminal, that that is what is being run. And we can also see the DFX output. And then we can see that our canisters have been deployed. So we have our front end canister, internet identity, and then our back end canister. So then we can run npm start to run this on our local host. So we can open that in our browser and we can see that we have this auction platform and we can go ahead and first let's start by signing in. And I'm just going to create a new local internet identity quickly. Um, remember that this is a local instance of internet identity, so it is not your real internet identity. It's just for local development purposes. So now we can see that I'm logged in with that and I can go ahead and create a new auction. 
we can call it my first auction. And I'm going to upload an image for my auction. I'll just use this little ninja icon. And then for the sake of this video, we'll just do one minute, but you can do up to 600 seconds with this app in its current configuration. But of course you can edit the backend source code to allow for auctions as long as you'd like. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click create new auction. And then we can see that my auction is now listed and I can click on auction details and I can see the auction's name, the description, the image that is up for auction. And I can go ahead and I'll bid one ICP. And we can see that that's the current bid by my principal. And I bid that 44 seconds before the end. And now there are 31 seconds, but let's go ahead and bid again. Maybe I really, really want to make sure that I get this ninja icon. So now the current bid is two ICP and the remaining time is less than 20 seconds. And then at the bottom here, we can also see the bid history. So we can see the price, what time in relation to the auctions end the bid was placed and then the principal that placed the bid and then once the auction ends, we can see final deal for two ICP to my principal and the bid was 28 seconds before the auction ended. Then we can click list auctions and we can just see all of the auctions and their details. That'll wrap up today's episode. Be sure to like and subscribe to the Definity YouTube channel if you enjoyed today's tutorial. You can also take a look at the resources in the video description for links to the supporting documentation for this tutorial or other links and resources to help you on your developer ladder. If you'd like to ask questions about this tutorial or get help with some other developer topic, be sure to check out the ICP developer form to connect with other developers on their developer ladder. That'll wrap things up for today. Take care.